Welcome back, baseball fans, to the Summer League Draft prep, and we're about to get started with the Summer League Draft, but I, this video is going to uh, take a look at comparing the Summer League Draft and the Fall League Draft strategies, and shows what a unique uh, situation I have uh, putting this uh, draft together. Let me start first by... I've got the um, the uh, draft of the 6972 set up ready to go here, but I also have another sheet open with the draft results from the 77, 78, 79, 80 Fall League. And in a draft, uh, anyway, I'm going to open up a new spreadsheet so that I can talk and... Uh, um, so real quickly, uh, so we finished the 76... 77, 78, 79 season in the Fall League. You take uh, all the cards from the 76 set out and then you, you prepare for the new Fall League, the Fall League of 2021, which is the 77, 78, 79, 80 Fall League. Now, what you had before was you had this number of players. This is number quantity of players. 8, 6, 4, 2 is 20. And you have 20 and you have 32 teams in the league. And 20 times 32 is 640 teams, total players, in the carryover league. And so when you are taking these eight players out, the eight players have to be put into three considerations. One is a keeper or a protected player. And these are four of the eight players that you like. Their card expires, right? Their card is over, that's gone. So you gotta replace that card with a card from one of these years. That's what a keeper means. Then you have waiver guys, which is two. And these are guys who are also, um, they're not quite as good as the keepers, obviously. They're like the fifth and sixth best players in this category. So they're considered to be put on waivers and they can be taken by any of the other teams in the league. One of the stipulations is a waiver player has to have that first year eligibility in 77. And then lastly, you have retires or guys who are at the end of their career. Obviously, if they retired, their card won't exist, so that's pretty self-explanatory. But you can also push into retirements guys who are ineffective or not very good anymore. So that means that this is the general formula. This is all of the good numbers that make the carryover league work so well. 32 teams is a great number of teams. Look how the NFL splits that up into eight divisions over two conferences, uh, four teams per division. Uh, the 20-man roster, that's what the basic Stratomatic game gave you. You have tw 12 hitters and eight pitchers, uh, which is universal. Um, in the old Stratomatic uh, first edition Super Advanced, in the National League, you would get 12 hitters and 8 pitchers. In the American League, you would get 13 hitters and 7 pitchers. I made it universal and everybody gets 12 and 8. It just makes all the math, these nice round numbers, that you can just keep pushing forward and forward and forward as long as you have consecutive years. Consecutive years, consecutive years. So let's now, after bringing up all these numbers, and then knowing that these, this is the 77 draft results. I'll start at the top. Uh, by groups of eight, each team's eight picks, starting with Chicago, then Toronto, and Florida. This sort is by team. Um, you'll notice that you see this bluish color here indicated in the column C is the distinguishing, distinguishes to me what that means. And it means the letter K is a keeper that I just talked about, a player the Cubs liked. And the Cubs simply protected Mercer, Madlock, Kingman, and Buckner. And lo and behold, each of those players' best year moving forward was in a separate year. It doesn't have to be that way, but it worked out perfectly for them that each of those four guys matched up for a unique year. It doesn't happen, as you'll see in the next group with Toronto, where um, they have only three keepers and they didn't keep all their guys and one of the keepers is down here in the second part portion of the draft. So when you're looking at a, just kind of look at the color scheme here and you're looking at the color blue, four 
keepers, 32 teams, 128 possible keepers of 256. That means half, right? So does it look like half of all these draft picks are blue? Just by just by looking at the you know the the, the color. And yeah, it's pretty close. And then the yellow is just two players per team or 64 waived guys who could find a job elsewhere in the league. And so there's only, there should only be 64 potential candidates to this. And then and then you'll see the red is the retired guys. And this is the, the really the really interesting part of it because these are guys who I deemed are toast. They're not any good anymore. And yet in the draft we still can consider their cards and lo and they get a call and say, hey, we need you to come out of retirement, Mike Phillips. Or in this case, Jim Cott. We need you to come out of retirement, Jim Cott or, or Ken Boswell, whatever it is. Beyond those three color schemes, these white card, these white cards are new guys, either rookies or guys who haven't been in the league yet. And then you also see some guys with a light green shade, which are simply improved guys. It's less than a dozen of those. So what I'm going to do here real quickly is I'm just going to do a quick sort of that category of keeper, retire, wave. And then when you do that, now you see the color schemes are grouped together. So when you look at the keepers here, starting in row 58 and extending down, to row 183, 126. So 126 of 128 possible keepers were kept, which meant that, you know, two players, a team had the rights to keep that guy, and they said, you know what, I could keep such and such, but I found somebody better. And then let's go to the wavered guys. 256 minus 211. 45 of 64, right? Which is, um, you know, uh, two thirds, between two thirds and three quarters, roughly, of the waiver guys found jobs. And even on this retired list, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 players were pulled out of retirement to play in this league. When you look at the accumulation of this, 126, 13, another 40, you're seeing that the same guys who were in the league last year are coming back in a different year, and it's majority. It's over half. It's 126 plus 45 plus 11. 182 of 256. 71% of the players from the 76 league came back anyway. They would just come back with a different team. And 30% and are brand new guys, rookies and guys hadn't been in the league yet. That's the big takeaway. And the reason I bring this up for this video is because in the 69, 70, 71, 72 set, the, the information is different. Where's my blank sheet? So that league, I'll just slide over here with some more information. A long time ago, I had an 81, 82, 83, 84 league. And then instead of going to 85, I said, you know what, I don't want to go to 85 uh, because that's when the uh, strat started to change the format for additional rule changes. And I didn't want to use those. I wanted to stick with the rules that were in place from 77 to 84. And the 69 reissue set and 70 reissue set had the same set of rules. So what I did was, I didn't go there, I went to 69. So when I did that, this 82, 83, 84, 69 carryover league was mixing eras. Mixing the era, the 80s with the 60s. And the reason I wanted to do that, just to have fun with this league as an experiment, I wanted to see guys from two different eras play together. So for example, Baltimore had Cal Ripken playing with Brooks Robinson. And Atlanta Braves had Dale Murphy playing with Hank Aaron. And Oakland had Ricky Henderson playing with Catfish Hunter and uh, Reggie Jackson. This is a, just a couple examples there. Um, Daryl Strawberry playing with uh, Tom Seaver and Jerry Kuzman, another example. So I thought that was cool to mix these eras. 
And when you do mix the errors though, you're also creating talent pools that are much bigger. Because now suddenly, you're, you're auditioning here in this 69. All these guys are brand new guys who had not been in that league, that league, or that league. And so suddenly you had a huge amount of potential talent to come into the league. And so the league became a lot more stronger. That's what I could think of. Just more talent was in these leagues. And then after that, the next year was this league. And then last year, which you saw on YouTube that I started posting last summer, was this league. 84, 69, 70, and 71. Each of the times uh, that I did this carryover, I had to modify the eight players from uh, Keeper, Waiver, and Retire. And at certain points, once these 80 guys, the players from the 1980s, once they started to diminish a little bit, then you are only keeping three, waiving two, retiring three. And then eventually you are only keeping two, waiving two, two, retiring four. Till eventually, the problem we have in this off season is that all these guys who's ever left, they're all gone. 256 guys just vanish overnight. And that's the end of the 80 cards. And they don't resurface, of course, back in the earlier timeline. Actually, there were some guys. 16. Only 16 players were playing baseball in 1984, and they were also playing baseball in 1969, 70, 71, and 72. I could show you those really quickly here. Nolan Ryan was one of them. Doyle Alexander. Steve Carlton. Carlton Fisk. Buddy Bell. Jose Cruz, Bert Hooten, Dusty Baker, Bill Buckner, Bill Russell, Don Sutton, Burt Blylevin, Dave Kingman, Ron Reed, Raleigh Fingers, and Dave Concepcion. At least those were the 16 players that I had from the 84-69 league that I could allow to be considered a keeper. That means that 240 new players I mean, this is a big deal, this number 240. Instead of 70% of the league, that was the figure we, we had here. Instead of 70% of the league returning in a different year, you have 6% returning. So that means that without keeping and protecting, it means the uh, the teams are literally, it's first come, first serve in the draft, and you're not gonna have all these protections, and you're not gonna be able to have all these easy draft picks. For instance, going back to the Cubs at the top of that draft, I knew in the first round, they were gonna, instead of taking any of these guys, an aging Jose Cardinal, Buck Martinez, Ray Fossey, or just an extra infielder, Dave McKay, I knew that their first pick would be Dave Kingman as a keeper because he won the home run title in 79. And then Bill Buckner won the batting title in 1980. And then in 78, Bill Madlock hit 312 or 320 for the Giants. And then in 77, Bobby Mercer still had a good year. I knew that the, all the most teams are keeping their keepers as their early picks, as their best players. So without, with only having 16 keepers, it means that in this uh, draft, um, it, it's going to have to be more detailed since there's no protection. The only protection you have is that the cards are stored in each of the boxes uh, with the teams that drafted them in a internal annual uh, league draft. Um, so they haven't been designated as a keeper yet. So that's really the only source I have. And the other more interesting problem to consider, all right, we'll take a little break here and uh, show you the draft setup and we'll come back with part two of the video. Okay, this is just a short video showing you what the uh, draft headquarters kind of looks like. You've got the four boxes, uh, which 
1969, 70, 71, and 72. And then uh, what I have here is for each box, if a play, I write down the player's name in here just to keep track. If it's a new player or if it's an improved player. Uh, with a 72 set, we're keeping them in these plastic bags as opposed to rubber bands as an experiment. The rolled up is this information, roster information. And say N71 is right here. Uh, these are much nicer looking, brand new looking uh, card holders. Uh, extra player or um, teams that are free agents here. Roster information there. 70. Again, the 32 teams. These are extra hitters and pitchers. Roster information. And the smallest box is the 69 because most. Uh, it says the fewest number of cards in it, obviously. And we have the extra players from the World Baseball Classic were in this. And you, you see each of the card sets is much smaller. You see. All right, we're back. So, so the second problem I have is each team has six guys from 1969. And so next year, in next year's draft of the 70, 71, 72, 73 league, one of the problems I have is that because the 1969 set, uh, basically every single player was eligible to be put in that league in that first year, there's a high concentration of, of talent already on the, on the carryover league in the year of 69, which is what all these which is what all these cards in the spreadsheet are. The problem you have is next year you're going to go back to a year where you're only allowed to keep four players. So there might be a cases where teams have five or six guys and they're only allowed to keep four and they have to let guys go. So one way to avoid that problem is to give the guy a new card in one of the future years in this draft so that you can uh, do that ex uh, extension now and then still extend four other guys you like in next year's draft. Let me take a look at just the best teams in the league and, and do that consideration for a moment. Let's start with Baltimore, who won the, the World Series last year. So these are currently 69 players. Frank Robinson, Paul Blair, David Johnson, Mike Cuellar, Dave McNally, and Dick Hall. Now. At the end of this year, going into 2022, I'm basically saying I can only keep four of these guys. I know Frank Robinson plays for the Orioles through the 71 series, as does Blair, Johnson, Quare, McNally, and I believe Dick Hall. So what you're saying is if I don't do anything at all, Baltimore can only keep four and has, has to let one of these guys go. Well, what if in this draft that I'm about to do, what if they take a look at these six guys and they pick one of, the si one of these guys to extend to a new contract next year? Say it's Davey Johnson. So if I move Davey Johnson from the 69 card to a 1970 or 71 card, for example, then in the uh, draft next year, I could protect Frank Robinson, Paul Blair, Mike Cuellar, and Dave McNally. So that's another issue that I'm going to have to address in this draft. A lot of teams are simply, instead of drafting new players, they're going to improve players from the 1969 set into the years 70, 71, or 72. Let's take another team, the Cincinnati Reds. Here Cincinnati has Pavletech, Rose, Perez, May, Maloney, and Granger. Now obviously, Rose, Perez, May are no-brainers there. And the fourth guy would be Jim Maloney. Um, but then again, his career is near an end, so they don't, they don't have a problem because they would let Pavletech go, they'd let Maloney retire, and they could protect Ranger. So they would have four guys for that consideration. So they have an advantage over Baltimore regarding that. Let's take a look at Detroit, a year removed from the World Series. You got Northrop, Cash, Horton, McLean, Lulich, and Roseboro. Now that's a problem. Because you like five of these guys, right? Northrop, Cash, Horton, McLean, and Lulich. Those five you like. Which means one of these five you should extend this year with his, whichever is 
looking at these five guys, you want to f identify which player has a better year, 1970, 71, or 72. Draft that card and then protect these four guys for next year so you keep all five guys. I hope this, I'm making sense with this. Let's go down to Oakland, the beginning of the dynasty. Okay, Oakland has Mike Torres, Bando, Jackson, Dick Green, Catfish, Hunter, Jim Nash. This might not be too bad. They would protect Bando, Reggie Jackson, Dick Green, and Catfish Hunter. They were, they're all on those World Series teams. Mike Torres wasn't there yet, and Jim Nash isn't really that great. So I think they would get away with protecting those, that four core. How about the uh, Giants? The Giants. McDowell, who they traded for Gaylord Perry, Willie McCovey, Ron Hunt, Bobby Bonds, and Marichal. They want to keep, the four they would keep would be Marichal, Bonds, McCovey, McDowell. They could let Hunt go, who went to Montreal anyway. So sometimes, you know, this is going to work out for certain teams. How about the Dodgers? The Dodgers have Messersmith, John, Osteen, and Brewer, and they'll let Hawk Taylor and Bubba Morton go. So sometimes it works out fine, and there, there are four um, only four guys you want to keep. Kansas City, a young team. These guys are just getting started. Pinella, Pat Kelly, Rooker, Drabowski would be the four they would keep. So, let me see the Minnesota Twins. Okay, Minnesota. Pete Reichert, Tony Oliva, Tovar, Killebrew, Jim Cott, Paranowski. Now, there, there's definitely more than five I would want, I'd want to keep. Reichert is is going to be a good lefty setup guy for the next four years. Oliva is great. Tovar is really great. Killebrew. Paranowski and Cott, two lefties. You want to keep at least one lefty, if not both. So this would be a perfect team to extend one of these guys now. Basically improve one of their 69 cards into the year 70, 71, or 72. How about the Mets? This is your 69 Mets players. You got Pat Corrales, Cleon Jones, A.G. Grody, Seaver, Kuzman. So there you got a problem. You see there's five right there. You don't need Pat Corrales, of course. But Jones, A.G., Grody, Seaver, Kuzman, that is the nucleus you want to keep together. So one of these guys should be extended, which means forfeiting their 69 season. Well, you don't want to forfeit Cleon Jones 69 season because he had 340. So you're not forfeiting that card. AG, Seaver Kuzman are insane as well. I think Jerry Grody would be the guy you extend. So the logic is for the Mets, instead of save a place in the draft where you improve Jerry Grody, who hits about 250 every year, from his 1969 card to new 70, 71, or 72 card. And when you do that, you can keep Cleon Jones, AG, Seaver, and Kuzman 69 cards, and then you can also protect those cards for next year. That way, all five of those guys will be Mets for the foreseeable future. What about the Pirates? And I'll give it a stop here. Oh well, Roberto Clemente, Manny Alou, Stargell, Hebner, Oliver, Roberto Pena. All right, Roberto Pena is the guy you cut. The other five guys, you like all of them. Uh, if I had to let one of those guys go, it would be Matty Alou. Obviously, Stargell, Clemente, Hebner, and Oliver continue their pirate careers. Um, so you could push Matty Alou's card into the future. The only problem is Matty Alou hits 331 with it. I don't think you want to be messing with that one. One strategy, I think, is with Stargell. Stargell. He's got a decent year, 307 with 29 home runs. But let's quickly look and see if Stargell has a better year in 70, 71, or 72. And I can do that by looking at a sort by team for the Pirates. And if I do that, where is Pittsburgh? All right, here's the three Stargell years right here to consider. Oh, look at 1971. There it is. 1971. I'm going to focus on this one year. Stargell is 295 with 48 bombs and 1,000 OPS. So that's what you need to do. Instead of you, instead of being content with the, um, the Stargell card that you currently have, you bump him, bump 
him up to his 71 card now. Then in the offseason, you keep Clemente, Alou, Hebner, and Al Oliver. And those cards get upgraded. So that's one of the considerations I have is to start considering the keeper, the blue that you saw here. There is no blue for the summer league. So I want to start thinking about potential blue players for next year's draft. So they don't have a problem and have to, you know, lose core players from a team. All right, that's it for now. I'll take a break and we'll get back to drafting the Summer League. Thanks for checking out the video.